Hi, this is Todd Owens. Welcome to this edition of IO Matters. And today we're going to compare and contrast Fiber Channel and iSCSI for Storage Networking Protocol. So what is storage networking? We have to connect servers to a shared storage array, like a three-par primary array. We do that over a storage area network using some switches and some I.O. connectivity uh, devices. The question is, what kind of connection do we make? Now, there's a bunch of different protocols that we can use. Uh, we can use Fiber Channel, we can use iSCSI, heck, we can use FCOE, we can use InfiniBand. The two most popular that you'll find uh, in from the SMB to the enterprise markets are going to be Fiber Channel and iSCSI. And I want to explain a little bit about what the difference is and when, when customers use one versus the other. Let's start with talking about performance. Um, Fiber Channel uh, today is readily available in 32 gigabit Fiber Channel and 16 gigabit Fiber Channel. And it's fully offloaded. And what I mean by offloaded is that uh, all of the work for moving the storage bits and bytes around from the adapter into the network is done in the adapter itself. There's no uh, requirement for the CPU or the server memory or the operating system to be involved in any part of the equation for uh, translating that storage information from the server through the adapter out into the network. iSCSI today, um, we have 10 gig, 10 gigabit, and we have predominantly 25 gigabit. Uh, so from a bandwidth perspective, we're relatively even. Uh, Fiber Channel has a little bit of an advantage. iSCSI, we have a choice between offload, offload, or what's called software iSCSI. So with iSCSI, the offload is very similar to Fiber Channel. Uh, to take the storage data from the PCIe bus, put it in the TCP IP packet, all of that processing is done on the CNA or the converged network adapter. Alternatively, I can use a standard NIC, a standard 10 gigabit or 25 gigabit NIC, and use software initiators. Now, the difference here is a software initiator requires me to use the processor, the driver, the memory of the server, and all those things. Well, guess what? That requires time, and time means latency. So if you want low latency, you use an offloaded technology like Fiber Channel or iSCSI offload. If you're using software initiators for iSCSI, your latency is going to be higher. There are some applications like SAP HANA, for example, that are very latency sensitive, and you can't use iSCSI uh, on, on that. You're going to use something like Fiber Channel. Um, and so any, any application where latency is, is important, there are ways to get low latency with the Ethernet, but from an iSCSI standpoint, you need either a, a CNA with, a, with an iSCSI offload or you just use fiber channel from that standpoint. So when we talk about efficiency, it gets right back into the offload. Um, fiber channel is a uh, purpose-built, you know, it's, it's storage only. So purpose-built, and all it does is storage traffic. Ethernet is a collision-based technology. Um, so it's kind of a free-for-all out there in the network. So even when you're running iSCSI, you're using offload uh, to reduce the latency. You're still going to have collisions in the network where you have to wait for something else to get done before you can finish your uh, storage transaction. There are ways around that by uh, using like converged Ethernet or lossless Ethernet, but that adds huge complexity. And the whole reason people use iSCSI is because it's simple. So you don't want to add complexity to a simple solution. You want to go to probably a better solution if that efficiency piece is very, very important. When, it's, uh, when it um, comes to security, I've never heard of a fiber channel network ever being hacked. Um, Ethernet networks get hacked all the time. So the security is only as good as your Ethernet networking practices. Um, do you have the firewalls in place? All of those kind of good things. You don't need all that stuff with Fiber Channel because it's typically a constrained storage-only network environment that sits within the data center. And even when you're sharing it across data centers, there's a whole different type of addressing scheme 
uh, using fiber channel zones and all kinds of other good things that keep it very, very, very secure. From a manageability standpoint, um, these are pretty much on par. Now, that may shock some people. Fiber channel used to be sort of a mystery technology. In fact, you had a SAN administrator who was so educated in storage networking that there is this dedicated job to it. Um, that was in the old days. Today, everything here is pretty much drag and drop um, or managed through some uh, other software package. In the case of um, HPE, management is done uh, very elegantly in a couple of different software products that HPE uh, provides for three-par customers. They can use Smart SAN for three-par, which provides full um, fiber channel network management from the three-par array, do, do, does all the zoning, does all the management and orchestration of the fiber channel SAN from the three-par management console. Um, HPE also has a product called uh, Network Orchestrator that makes management really simple for both fiber channel and iSCSI environments. Network Orchestrator uh, sits on uh, a virtual machine basically in the server and runs across the entire storage network and it will uh, show you all the devices, the adapters, it will even tell you transceiver temperatures, it will talk talk to the switches, it will tell you about the storage devices, compare firmware versions, uh, configuration, all kinds of good things. It's, uh, HPE Network Orchestrator is really a great uh, software package for the larger scale SAN environments. And then from a cost standpoint, um, people uh, tend to, to say fiber channel is expensive because it's a dedicated network. So you have to buy separate switches and cables and transceivers and dedicated fiber channel adapters and build your storage area network or your SAN. Um, I would argue that, yeah, you can do iSCSI low cost and use your existing ethernet network and just create, carve out some VLANs and say, those are my storage networks but you don't want your storage competing with all your other network traffic. If you're gonna do a storage area network right, you're gonna build dedicated networks. So you're gonna have two switches, two dedicated adapters, dedicated cabling, and a dedicated environment. And what that means is you're really looking apples to apples um, if you're doing dedicated storage area networking. Um, the, the cost of the adapters plus the transceivers is about equivalent between fiber channel and iSCSI. Remember, fiber channel adapters may be more expensive than Ethernet adapters, but they come with transceivers. With the Ethernet adapters, you have to buy the transceivers or the DAC cables or whatever you're going to use to connect. And with storage, you typically have to use transceivers and fiber optic cables. So that the storage, the, the adapter and transceiver costs are about the same, the switch costs are about the same. So when you're building a dedicated storage area network, cost doesn't really come into the equation. They're, they're, they're about equivalent. So to sum up storage area networking, you know, we have two choices, fiber channel and iSCSI. Uh, from my perspective, if you're in an environment, a small to medium business or, or uh, maybe the lower end of the mid-market where you have a limited number of network administrators and complexity kills, iSCSI is a great choice. But for everything else where your business runs on data and the data stored in those arrays um, can be catastrophic if it's not available, I highly recommend Fiber Channel as the way to go for connecting your shared storage devices to your servers. This is Todd Owens, and I'm here to tell you, I.O. Matters.